Hello reformers and welcome back to Fantasy Calradia and Nakra the Tower who has just become a war chief in the previous episode and we are now gonna test his metal against a siege. This is one of the last kind of qualifying ele elements, <laughs> yes, if I could speak, of a class showcase so we might as well do it and I've taken a look at the composition that they have here. We have zero engineering skill, which is very disappointing. I can't believe we don't have a companion with at least one in engineering, but oh well, there you go. But yes, hopefully we will be able to take this and hopefully, well, yes, Great Warlord Krothu will see fit to award it to us. Now, to the note of upgrades and updates to the mod, you probably want to check out the description there because unfortunately it seems like mod DB does not get the updates due to some kind of annoying administrative work that needs doing and yeah, it's just all a whole bunch of messes. So yes, thankfully the mod creator, because they are extremely diligent when it comes to updates and patching and fixing bugs, uh, yeah, you can basically find that on, I think it is Nexus Mods. You can probably find it on Nexus Mods. So that's the link I'm probably going to place down into the, into the description there. So that's a little bit easier. And otherwise, let us be ready to lead our soldiers in an assault. That sounds like a good idea to me, doesn't it? All right, so now we've got to be a bit careful here. They don't have any Diana units, so we should be pretty good here. I mean, you know... They don't have anything that can really deal massive damage, and now I'm going to get hit in the face for huge amounts of damage. What do you say? Yes, I think that's probably going to happen. I have no ranged weapons. I'm probably going to need to get a couple of those in the future, you know, if uh, if this continues to be, you know, a series, a full series or something like that. But I think we're going to be going over to a different class very, very soon and, you know, checking out some different gameplay styles. Maybe a, maybe a Dwarven Paladin or... Something something similar to that, perhaps. But yeah, right now, we have our Maul of the Titans, and I am, well, basically mauling everyone in front of me. Oh, yes. And I'm actually really surprised I'm being allowed to use it to such effect here, because usually, when you have such a long weapon, it's really difficult to use, you know? You can't get into many tight areas, and it's just very, very tricky in many respects. But... This seems to just slip in there, no problem at all. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I, I guess, I guess we're just lucky, you know, just very lucky there. All right, so yes, thankfully I'm also being hit. <laughs> so now my enrage has made my damage even better, which is crazy because this also has crushing through blocks and everything like that. So, yeah, unfortunately we don't have. Oh, really? Are you serious? I got shot by a bolt and it reduced my enrage? Oh, okay, never mind. But yeah, unfortunately I don't have any shaman units, so I'm not going to be getting any healing. But, well, do we need any healing? I don't know, really. Maybe we do, maybe we don't. The only problem that I foresee... Whoa, these smashes are... Wait a minute. Are that, is that... A, whoa, are, are the smashes bigger than the normal normal ogres? I, I don't... I don't think so. But they seem bigger. Is that just me? Oh well, never mind. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, the only unfortunate thing about the Maul of the Titans, as I was going to say, is that it is blunt damage. And blunt damage, eh, it's, it's not great for doing sieges, you know, because if you have to retreat, all of the enemies that you've knocked unconscious are probably going to restore themselves while you restore yourself. And, you know, then it's just going to end up being exactly the same fight again. Because if you are as proficient as apparently Nakra is at the moment at killing people because he's being ignored for the most part by the opponent then well he's gonna probably kill about 60 80 and maybe even 100 units of the enemy and well unless he is able to take this which I think we actually have a pretty good shot of doing at the moment I mean as I've said before the Saranids and in general the main original factions are not especially powerful in comparison to the new ones so yeah if you're you know if you're thinking of playing with one of the you know older factions then well that, I think that's probably going to be quite a challenge in comparison to maybe starting with the undead or with the dwarves or elves or something like that so yeah 
I'd watch out for that, but I know that a lot of you do appreciate a challenge, so, well, go right ahead if you want to have huge amounts of dwarves bearing down upon you and, you know, stomping you into the ground a bit. Yes, that's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. If you play as, I don't know, what, the Nords? Swadia? Nah, yeah, probably, probably Swadia. I don't know. It, re it really depends. I don't know who the dwarves go up against, actually. But there you go. 29 morale and 11 renown. That was actually an extremely fast siege. And as you can see, 100 enemy units were wounded. And that makes me think, how many did we kill? Specifically, how many did Nakra take out? I don't know. But that is a pretty impressive number. Alright, so yes, there is a bug to do with the prisoner management and the prisoners being taken but that eh, I don't really mind so much about that because we're not really relying on that income at the moment I do feel sorry for those of you that are you know slave trading characters and everything like that but apparently you do get more money when you go to a ransom broker so if you're extremely close to a town or if you just happen to know where a ransom broker is then you might make it there in time to sell and then get double your money because the prisoners obviously do end up lo what, losing? No, leaving. There we go. Ah, yes. So I guess I'm just going to take these and just go with that. I I do know that the horsemen may sell for a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to find a ransom broker anyway. And I personally feel like selling this loot is probably going to be a little bit more lucrative for me in the long run. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so great warlord Krothu, let us send word to him. And hopefully we will be awarded Bardak Castle. Now I chose this because it's on the edge of Orc territory, as you can see. I didn't want to fight the Kurgits for very well-known reasons. I really did not want to, you know, fight those werewolves. But it actually would have been an extremely good idea to fight for Talbuk Castle. And you know why? Because my village is just over there. So if my village and indeed Talbot Castle came under siege or a raid or whatever, then it would have been actually pretty good for me to, you know, try and defend them. But then I thought to myself, well, the Saranids do seem to be a little bit easier because of the, the werewolves and obviously because there were no Gianni units actually here. So that obviously makes a huge difference. Anyway, our companions have leveled up, we've leveled up, and I'm actually wondering, can I get more points in Power Strike and Iron Flesh? That's the reason why I put 31 in Strength. Let's just take a... Whoa, we can! Look at that! Alright, I actually don't know what the limit is. The limit must be 15, surely. Something like that, but there you go. We've now got 90 HP, which is... Ludicrous, ludicrous levels right there. Okay, so I think I'm probably gonna leave his strength and Iron Flesh and Power Strike at those levels at the moment because I'd like to level up his intelligence a little bit more for magic defense because in the long run he's probably going to need it if this does become, you know, full series, etc, etc. So yeah, that would be pretty cool to do. I actually don't know what to spec into. I, I guess inventory management. I have nothing else to spec into, so... I think that's going to be fine. Let's go for some throwing weapon proficiency if he decides to go for some spears. And let's wait here for some time and see if one of the Saranid vassals decides to turn up and say hi. And we're going to... Well, we're going to crush them, aren't we? We're going to crush them literally with the Maul of the Titans. Alright, so we do actually have one vassal here that has decided to attack... But I didn't really want to wait for him to do the siege because, in my experience, when there's only one of them, they do tend to dilly-dally a little bit. In other words, they just stand outside doing nothing. And I don't really want that to happen because then they could bring reinforcements. I'm not really scared of their reinforcements, but, you know, it would be a bit of a pain. So I felt like eliminating them immediately is probably a better idea. And, oh yeah, I should also report that it seems like War Chief Brugar has laid siege to Amarad, which is one of the major towns in the Saranid Sultanate. So that's pretty interesting in itself, because I actually thought they were chewing into the Kurgit Khanate at the moment, but apparently not. Apparently they've decided... Oh, it seems like Nakra is leading the charge in the, into the Saranid's territory. Let's do something to help him out a little bit. So maybe they are actually diverting 
most of the vassals away from my current position, and that is making it a lot easier for us to defend Bardak Castle. But obviously, as I say that, I'm not entirely sure, really, but, you know, <laughs> the AI is not known for being extremely extremely supportive, I guess you could say, but yeah, it uh, it might be the case. Who knows? They might be like, oh, yeah, it seems like someone has decided to attack over there, and, you know, maybe they've actually decided to be a bit helpful for once, but yeah, anyway. Oh, it actually does seem like the Smashers and the Ogres have blunt weapons, so it's not just me with a blunt weapon, so if I, yes, if we do actually decide to do a siege and a war of attrition kind of siege, which might actually be needed and necessary in cases like the undead, because the undead are going to have just so many units in their garrisons thanks to their necromancy that I don't know whether we're going to be able to do it, but I think if I'm correct, if this actually does happen with my kills as well, instead of just my forces, but I think even if you kill undead units with blunt weapons, they should just die anyway, because they technically cannot be saved by surgery. Am I correct by that? Hmm, I think so. I think so, because I've seen in the past that so zombies and skeletons and all that sort of thing do not get taken prisoner. They cannot be taken prisoner or anything like that, because they just, they just die, you know? So that's pretty cool in itself, because that means that having ogres and the amount of smashers that we have and obviously me using the Maul of the Titans is going to take a whole load of my mind because if if we went in against, I don't know, how, how many did they have in the Obsidian Spire when we were actually there with Arcane Deathbloom? Who, by the way, is going to return. Don't worry about that. He is going to return. But yeah, the point is, is that we probably want to be just eliminating those guys with blunt weapons, you know? So, I mean, they've got 1,400, right? They had 1,400 at the Obsidian Spire, so I think that's probably going to be difficult to begin with. But, yeah, hopefully it's going to make all the difference for us to be able to kill them. Come on now, let's do, let's do some damage if I can. Oh, there we go, nice. After that enraging hit, your damage is set to 130%. Oh, very good. Oh, I, how I pine away for a 400% damage increase, but that hasn't happened in quite some time, but I suppose that is the RNG nature of the Enrage skill, which I'm actually pretty fine with. Now, I'm wondering, hmm, do, do the, no, I don't think the races have anything to do with your specific set of skills. I think the only thing that actually does have an effect is your class. So, for example, paladins tend to have auras, clerics have healing spells and, you know, things to use against undead units, and, oh uh, well, what would, what would the ranger's skill be? What would a ranger's skill be? Because I'm thinking an elven ranger would be pretty fun, but, uh, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what their skill is. Oh, that's going to be interesting to find out, I guess. All right, so there you go, that was a pretty easy fight. Not too bad. We actually lost only one smasher because he, he just does he, he just does decides not to do anything really but there you go he actually had a bunch of prisoners from the undead but I'm not going to be taking those because we have such few spaces anyway and I don't really want to have the chance of reducing our relation any bit just because we have some random units in there so I'm, I'm just gonna do it the simple way and there you go all right so let's go back to Bardak castle real quick and actually, just let's just wait a second real quick. Okay, yeah, we want to upgrade our juggernauts. We have 31 orcish juggernauts. I mean, you've seen these. Yeah, okay. So there's a bit of an issue there with the <laughs> with the picture. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the mod creator is going to get on that. But look at that. 35 strength. They actually have the exact same amount of HP that we do. They have eight athletics. Eight. An 8 in shield as well, 7 in power strike, 10 in iron flesh, and 400 in every proficiency. Which is just crazy in my opinion. So, there you go. Alright, so I'm going to wait here for some time once again. Hopefully, we're going to hear word from Great Warlord Crothu relatively soon. Well, this is a very rare occurrence, isn't it? Okay, so we actually do have a siege defense on our hands. Oh yeah, and by the way... It seems like Great Warlord Crothu knows who to give props to, and he has indeed given us ownership of Bardak Castle. And I was just waiting here for some time because there was actually 
a very, very small vassal that I just eliminated. He only had about 30, so it was not really necessary for me to show that, <laughs> I don't think. And this guy, I just had a feeling that he was actually going to go through with the siege instead of just waiting outside and doing nothing. So he has 67, which is not exactly great, so I don't exactly know how he's going to do, but I have a feeling like he's going to feel like he's been hit by a brick wall. So let's see, let's see whether that is indeed the case. I'd actually like to jump out here and, uh, <laughs> and actually murder them from behind. But um, yes, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to work really well. Because here's the thing. I'm not going to be able to swing this large weapon. I really am not going to be able to swing here. So I'm either going to have to jump out and kill them as I say, from behind, or hopefully get some space in here. Oh, I am getting a little bit of space, but as you can see, there are just so many units crowding us out that the Maul of the Titans is probably not the best weapon for this particular activity. <laughs> but, well, let's see what we can do out there. Okay, come on. Let's do this. Iron Flesh, please absorb the damage. It does! It does! It does absorb it. That's awesome. Okay, I was actually thinking that it wouldn't. <laughs> oh, well, that would have been pretty amusing anyway. Oh, my enrage has gone off. Oh, very nice. Oh, yes. Okay, so here we go. This is where things get funny. Oh, yes. I'm hitting for 400 damage. Yeah. And I don't even have any speed bonus. That is crazy. All right, so horizontal swings it is. Oh, or maybe not. Apparently... Apparently Nakara doesn't like horizontal swings. Apparently he just likes the, the overhead. He likes the way the bones crack underneath the, the weight of the maul, I suppose. Yeah, that's probably it. Oh, hello. There's some Jani units right there. Okay, well, that's... Well, they're, they're dead, aren't they? Yes, they're very dead. Wow, that was, that was pretty fun, actually. <laughs> that worked a lot better than I thought. But there you go. Eight Renown, eight Morale, not bad. And we can take him prisoner. That's even better. And... I am probably not going to be taking anyone. I'll just take these Gianni units, but I don't think they're going to allow us to do anything really with them. And I'm just going to take some horses, increase my speed on the world map, hopefully. Alright, so there you go. That is pretty nice. So we still have, obviously, no one in the garrison here, but I personally feel like the easiest way to do that would be to, I don't know, probably go to Bloody Cliff? And just recruit units for... How much is it now? I think it's... Is it 200? I think it is actually 200, yeah. 200 dinars for... Is it 10 units? Yeah, I think it's 10 units. And I think that's probably going to be the most efficient way of getting the garrison outfitted here. Unless we are able to get a constable. Because I already have a treasurer slash seneschal slash whatever the guy is that manages your treasury etc in there in the lord's hall and uh yeah i took a look at some of the options but none of them are actually very useful right now because in my treasury i currently have about 800 dinars and i've got about 1600 on me right now which is not very good. I am going to need to invest in a couple more businesses, or I'm going to need to... Oh yeah, I did put a lot of money into the Gnomish Bank, because I actually did win another tournament while I was off screen. But apart from that, I have literally no money. So that's that's a bit of, a bit of an issue, isn't it? That is a bit of an issue. But yeah, I think the, probably the most efficient way is going back and forth between Bloody Cliff and here, and then using Bardak Castle as sort of a stockpile for units and then just taking from there anytime I need some reinforcements so there you go all right so yeah a lot of other people whoa okay yes the bleeding throat clan have taken Amorad as you can see which is actually right next to Bardak castle hilariously enough and uh, yeah we have a bunch of different trade agreements going on there and the Gianni units have left but I could have maybe made it to Amorad in that time I probably could have made it over there ah there seems to be another fellow. Ah, is this the guy? I, I actually can't remember the name of the guy that uh, decided to siege before, but maybe it's this one, because he's got only 27. He's being chased off by a, a random band of undead units, and there come the sweeping hordes of the orcs. Oh my. Yes, that is a pretty crazy number of enemies, if you are indeed on their bad side. So... Let's manage this castle. Migrate the town's population. Ooh, that's cool. Let's migrate to orcs. 
Oh, it will cost 3,000. I'm pretty sure it's already orcs, right? I mean, you would think. Is it? Well, who's that over there? Yeah, that seems like an orc to me. Okay, that's perfectly fine. I was just like, oh, it better be orcs. Better be orcs on... Or some, someone's gonna pay. Alright, so yeah, there's the Chamberlain, by the way. You can change the tax rate for a fief, which is basically just your one village if you are in my position. And you can manage some fief improvements, so I can basically manage everything that I own from one Lord's Hall, which in my opinion is absolutely fantastic. I think that's that's pretty insane how you're able to do that. And obviously the treasury doesn't have very much in there. So yeah, that's that's basically it. And I guess I'm just going to try and wait for a constable. And I'm also then obviously just going to travel back and forth and things like that but stay tuned for the next class showcase that is going to be coming soon and we're going to have a lot of fun on that or at least i hope so a lot because we definitely had a lot of fun with the orc barbarian i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time